Before we get into the mechanics of how to put together budgets, I think it's important that we take a step back and have a conceptual understanding of what a budget is and why the budgeting process is so important for organizations. So if we want to think about a definition for a budget, uh, here's one that I, I think is really apt, and it's really a plan. It's a plan for how an organization is going to obtain and use resources over a specific period of time. So it could be for a year, you have like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and, and really the budget is laying out, it's charting the course for this organization. It's putting together the plan of how that organization is going to uh, obtain and, and use these resources. So let's think of cash. So cash is a specific type of resource. So a budget might say, okay, from quarter one to quarter four, we're looking at those different quarters and saying, how is the firm going to obtain cash in those quarters, whether it be from customers or for financing, those different types of sources, and then how is it going to spend uh, and use those resources to obtain uh, direct materials and those different types of things. So there are all kinds of budgets, but essentially they have in common this idea that they're a plan uh, for how the organization is, is going to obtain and use resources. And so when we think about, okay, now we know what a budget is, what is the ultimate purpose? Why are we doing this? Well, one is kind of self-explanatory. We've already talked about in our definition, the, the planning. But when we talk about this planning, what we really want to do is want to get in this notion of goal setting, right? So, so the top management is really trying to kind of infuse uh, lower level managers and all employees throughout the organization uh, with, with common goals, right? We've got these different goals and, and the budget is a way of really laying out these goals for the organization. But all these goals and the, the plan and all this really means nothing if we don't have this aspect of control to our budgets. And, and what we're talking about with control is we want to make sure that after we've done the plan, after we've made the plan, we want to make sure that the employees are moving toward the goals, right? So if we just make some nice budget, we say, hey, uh, here, here's a really nice budget that we've got here, and, and we feel really confident this is a good plan for our organization, but we don't actually take any steps to make sure that we're following this budget or that we're actually you know, taking the necessary actions we need to reach those goals that we've set, then it's really the budget is pointless. So, so we've got this planning aspect to it, but the control is just as important because without that, uh, the budget is, is just a piece of paper or an Excel file that has, has no value. So we want to do the planning and control, and ultimately that's going to allow us this, this budgeting process and these two components are going to allow us to do a number of really useful things uh, for our organization. And, and one is, and, and this is kind of uh, mechanical uh, as part of the definition, is we're allocating resources uh, to the different departments, right? So we've got the marketing department, we've got the accounting department, we've got finance and, and, and so forth. We've got a number of departments and then we can have different product divisions. And so we've got to find a way to split up these resources, right? The firm does not have an infinite amount of resources, right? There's a limit. And so we have to say, well, how do we divide this? And that's what the budgeting process is all about, right? We're coming up with a plan that ideally is going to provide adequate resources to all these different uh, departments. And then by doing this, we're also forcing these managers, when we think about kind of the lower level managers or mid-tier uh, managers, we're forcing them to think long term, right? Because we all have a tendency to just think about uh, the day to day and, and what happens to, has to happen uh, day to day, what has to happen this week or, or by this Friday. But in reality, if the firm's gonna be successful, we need to be thinking long term as well. In the budgeting process by saying, okay, a year ahead, we need to set our goals and, and, and come up with a way to move toward those goals. By doing that, uh, we're forcing all our managers to think about the long run, which is in the best interest of the firm. And then ideally in a perfect world, as part of this process, coming up with this plan and, and the control aspects, we're coordinating the activities of all these different departments, right? So top management can say, here's what our goals are, here's what we want to do, we want to obtain this equipment, we want to produce this amount of units, and so forth. And we're coordinating these activities so that we don't have to, these different departments just going off doing these things without even thinking about what the other department is doing. For example, our production department, we don't want them to just uh, come up with some random uh, idea of how many units they're supposed to produce, right? So the sales department is actually going to come up with a forecast and tell 
and, and tell the product, production department, here's how many units we think we're going to produce. And now they're coordinating their activities because now that the pro production department has kind of a guide of, oh, okay, here's what we, we need to do. Here's our guide. Here's what amount of units we think are going to be sold next quarter. So the budgeting process is coordinating uh, the activities among these various departments. And, and, and in some sense, that can lead to problems because the departments can see themselves as competing for resources, and they can actually try and sabotage each other's behavior, and that can actually be a really bad thing. Uh, but ultimately, in the perfect world, we're doing a good job. We put together a budget committee and so forth, and, and we're able to coordinate these activities for the best interest of the firm. And also, one thing that's really important of, about uh, uh, the budgeting process is it gives us a way to benchmark managers, right? We can look at what was the budgeted a budgeted amount, say what was the sales forecast, and then what was the actual amount of sales. And we can compare managers along these two lines and say, okay, look, we were budgeted for this amount, and the actual amount was this, and then hold them accountable. And you could even say, okay, you had a really good performance. You 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 did uh, you did a great job based on this this kind of notion of benchmarking. Again, that's just comparing these things. We say, okay, you know what, you did really well uh, in terms of the benchmark, so we're going to give you a bonus. You did a great job. We, we forecasted 20,000 units in sales, and you came in with 22,000. We're going to give this manager a bonus, and we're going to say he, uh, he or she did a great job. And so the budgeting process is, is, is so much more than just coming up with some plan and saying, okay, here's what we're going to spend. Uh, we've got this control function. Uh, we've got this notion of, of how are we going to split up resources uh, to all the different uh, product lines, departments, and then trying to coordinate these activities of all the departments so that we can reach the goals that have been set by top management for the organization as a whole while thinking, you know, taking into consideration the long-term implications of all the decisions uh, for the firm in the best interest in the long run, and then say, how are our managers doing compared to what we budgeted? How is the actual uh, comparing to what was budgeted?